Hi, I'm David Johnson, and this is Verse by Verse, a short podcast all about exploring the insights and lessons of the inspired Word of God. Scottish archaeologist and New Testament scholar Sir William Ramsey once wrote, The most sensitive part of the human anatomy is the pocketbook. When we see the almost incomprehensible salaries paid to top executives, sports stars, and entertainers, most of us shake our heads in amazement that so much value is placed on something so fleeting and trivial. A recent report shows that the median salary of the CEOs of the top 500 U.S. companies is 324 times as much as the median salary of the average worker. A new term has been added to our vocabulary, greedflation, describing the impact of such exorbitant salaries on the overall economy. But when Ramsey wrote those words, he was not commenting upon the salaries of CEOs or everyday workers. He was focused on the challenges the Apostle Paul faced in meeting his own needs while trying to preach the gospel. It's a problem ministers continue to face today. According to the U.S. Department of Labor in 2021, the average clergyman received a salary 28% lower than the average worker. Certainly, there are exceptions, and those serving in larger, wealthier congregations are often compensated at higher rates. But the average ministerial salary is actually not much more than minimum wage. Is that the way God intended? Scripture shows that tithes and offerings actually belong to God, not to the individual. In ancient Israel, when God placed the Levites into their responsibility for all the service of the tabernacle and later the temple, He gave them the tithes and offerings to provide for their needs. We no longer have Levites, tabernacles, or temples, but our passage for today shows that He intended that same system to provide for the needs of His true servants. In 1 Corinthians 9, verses 13 and 14, we read, Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple, and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar? Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. As we read further in this chapter, we find that Paul claims that he has the right to receive the tithes and offerings from people he's serving. But he further says he chose not to exercise that right. Why not? Paul recognized how suspicious people can be about money issues, so he chose to avoid any situation that might make people question his motives for preaching the gospel. If they thought he was preaching in hopes of getting money from them in return, that could keep them from fully considering the message. The biblical account seems to show that Paul had a personal practice of not accepting the tithes and offerings from those he was serving at the time. In some cases, Paul worked at a manual trade in order to provide for his own needs. It's also clear that he sometimes accepted funds from believers in other areas who wanted to support his efforts. So, should ministers engage in what is called dual career ministry today? working at another job and caring for the church in their spare time? Paul showed it can be done that way when necessary, but it's not the way God intended. At one point, out of necessity, I pastored that way for about two years, and I can tell you from experience, the quality of my pastoral care was severely diminished. Some have assumed that full-time ministry is a relatively easy profession. As some have jokingly put it, ministers only work one day a week. If you ever talk to a minister about his workload, you might be surprised. A number of years ago, our organization did a study on the number of hours the average minister worked each week, and a number of us diligently tracked our work hours for a month. I felt good about my numbers because I found I was averaging 68 work-related hours every week. When the results came in, I found out I was a bit of a slacker. The average was actually over 70 hours. Spreading the gospel message today, the good news about God's soon-coming kingdom, involves more than congregational ministry. There are writers, editors, administrators, accountants, video and audio professionals like those who record and edit these podcasts, educators, computer and internet specialists, and many more. All of them are supported by the same system God established centuries ago. It is the faithful tithes and offerings of those whom God is calling that continue to make the work of spreading the gospel to all the world possible. 
And when we focus on the way God puts His tithes and offerings to use to spread His message, we might find the old pocketbook becoming a little less sensitive. Verse by Verse is a companion podcast to the Daily Bible Verse blog, which you can find on the Life, Hope, and Truth Learning Center. Check out the show notes for more.